and the BBC employees are being given a 4.2% pay rise. Well, isn't that special? Isn't that marvellous? Because the BBC, apparently, according to Tim Davey, uh, who is the new director general, the BBC, he says, is the home of creative excellence and world-beating impartial journalism. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, well said, Mr Davey. Impartial journalism, it ain't. Six percent of the people uh, in this country think it's trustworthy. I'm afraid that's not a very good record. Six percent is also the number of people who were let go from the BBC. But do you know the BBC is the largest broadcaster in the world because they employ the most people in the world? They employ 22,000 people, right? Now, they claim that they've had cutbacks. They claim that because they didn't get a pay rise last year because of the pandemic, they should get one this year. And because inflation is at 7%, 4.2% isn't bad at all. Well, who do you know that's getting a 4.2% pay rise? It's an absolute outrage. At the time when their charter is under question, at a time when they're still charging pensioners uh, for a TV licence, I would say this. The BBC is skating on extremely thin ice. They let 6% of their uh, workforce go. That accounts for about 1,000 people. There's still 22,000 people working for the BBC, at the BBC. It's a shocking state of affairs, and quite frankly, I'm sick to death of paying uh, for what they do. I don't think I want to anymore. Thanks very much indeed. Cheerio. BBC, according to Tim Davey, the new boss, right, he says it's the home of creative excellence and world-beating impartial journalists. journalism. Um, sorry, I think he's not been watching the news lately, has he? Well, when I was at BBC WM, Mike, in Birmingham, yeah. um, there was open resentment and almost bordering on hostility towards Boris Johnson and conservatism. And, and that, naturally, I think, does indeed sort of leak its way into output. I, yeah. I always remember during the lockdown and the newsreader of the day, Rishi Sunak was doshing out billions, and he was on the front page of the paper, and the newsreader said, I, I really want to like him but I can't because he's a Tory. Mm. And that's the problem with the BBC, certainly WM. I knew everybody's politics, and mm. I think that if you work for the BBC, you should leave your politics at home. Um, Boris Johnson, there was open resentment towards him. The, when the, uh, the, the exit poll came out on 2019, uh, there, there were journalists weeping um, in the office. I'm not kidding you. I came into work <laughs> the next morning. And I was told that there were people crying. Yeah. Um, I, I was told, just going back to the impartiality, I, I opened my show on the day after the 82-seat majority and said it was a stunning result for mm. the Tories. I was immediately told not to use the word stunning because it implies maybe some sort of editorial slant. And I was so incensed by this. Right. I, I went to the dictionary online, Googled stunning, and just copied and pasted it and sent it to my boss. And, and, and that was... That was that was endemic. It, it was everywhere, Mike. Yeah, um, no, clearly. I mean, I've spoken to so many people um, who, during, before, and after the whole Brexit debate and the referendum, uh, would be called in to go on to any questions or to the question time. And if you were from the Brexit Party side of the the argument, or a Tory MP who wanted to to leave the European Union, you were literally treated like a leper. Um, you know, they didn't like want you to sit in the same room as them uh, before the show. They didn't really want to talk to you. Uh, if there was a conversation, it was always very leery. And people genuinely thought that you were some kind of, you know, mad racist bigot. And I've been told this personally by people that I know. Yeah. Uh, the regularly callers who had a brexit -y opinion wouldn't be allowed on air um, because it was bordering on... Well, I, I always remember, this is a good example, Mike. There, there was a story about a, 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 pr a jet that was being chartered by a farmer somewhere in England to mm. bring over Eastern European workers or something. And someone called in with an opinion, and, and he wasn't allowed on air. And I buzzed through to say, why, why isn't he allowed on air? And he, he was, you know, shut down as some sort of racist. He mm. wasn't a racist. He just had an opinion that differed from the very liberal management yeah. who, 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 who uh, staffed the BBC. Yeah. And you've told me in the past, Danny, they didn't like sort of elderly callers, they didn't like old people really at all, did they? Which is what the local sort of, uh, sort of national, the local radio um, stations that they have all over the country are supposed to be providing a service for. Mike, this is the scandal. And I mentioned this to you on your fabulous show 12 months ago. The BBC now make over 75s, pay the £159 a year. But it's well known across the BBC that the managers don't want those voices mm. on the radio. Why? because they don't want to put off the next generation of licence fee payers. Mike, you may remember that when I was jettisoned for being too old and too white at 50, not my words, the, the station's words, 
uh, we, we, we were on a downward trajectory because the station was going very woke, etc. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tragic for me to report, Mike, that the station has lost, I think, three quarters of its market share. Now, what that means to people who aren't in broadcasting is that one in 50 people who listen to the radio in Birmingham, one in 50 listen to BBC WM. Blimey. When I was there, it was like one in 10 or one in 11. Yeah. And, and it's gone woke, and unfortunately it's gone broke. And, and they're continuing with this, this diversity yeah. um, play, Mike. And, and it, the, the listeners are just voting yeah. with their feet. Exactly right. But their reward, of course, uh, as we've been reading about today, is to get a 4.2% pay rise. And they're claiming, uh, and I didn't actually know this until I looked it up, the BBC is the biggest broadcaster in the world, right? In the world, because they employ 22,000 people. They've let about 1,000 of them go, but they're probably all coming back through the back door working freelance. But the, yeah, local, the local radio network, which I rail about all the time, is about, I think there's 63 different local radio stations, including uh, BBC WM. Um, it's about a budget of 100 million quid, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a budget of around about 100 million pounds. And... Look, I love local radio, and I've got friends at local radio, and the journalists in the newsroom, Mike, deserve the 4% pay rise. Mm. The, the people who make the decisions don't deserve a hike in, uh, in their salaries, I believe. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a tragedy what's happening, but when 1 in 50 people listen, listen, if you and I were to go into business, and I say, I'm going to throw millions at a local radio station, Mike, and we're going to get 1 in 50 people who listen to the radio, they're mm. going to listen to our station, yeah. you would think I was berserk. Yeah. I know, it's absolutely mad. But also, um, they make all these arguments all the time now as they do this kind of, you know, backward um, retreat from uh, the Charter because they've all accepted now, I think, that, you know, things are going to have to change. I mean, even Netflix have worked out that you can't continue uh, with what is, whatever your planning model is because it changes all the time. You know, kids are watching more stuff on YouTube. You know, BBC, in very large part, is kind of redundant in many ways. I mean, I've even heard people now talking about getting rid of things like Radio 3, getting rid of things like, you know, BBC 3, which they already got rid of once, but somehow seems to have come back. You know, BBC Four, what do you need that for? You know, have BBC One and BBC Two, and if you want to make those, you know, free-to-air channels, fine. I, my belief is everything else, apart from, say, a much smaller network of local radio, disappears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's uh, one department that's shrouded in secrecy, and it's the commercial arm of the BBC. And, and no-one really knows how much money it makes, but it, it sells incredibly popular programmes all around the world, Mike. Uh, it's shrouded in secrecy. Um, and, and I'd love to know exactly how many billions they had in, in, in the coffers. It, it's really peculiar, though, Mike, because I, I take you back to your earlier question about mm. the future funding of the BBC. I'm passionate about radio. I, I love your radio station. The tragedy is I hear my old callers phoning you, and, and, and it's galling. <laughs> really? It's galling, Mike, because... Yeah. They, they don't want to be exposed to the very diverse, progressive... Yeah, well, I mean, one of, the reasons, one of the reasons I did that rant at the top of the show was because we had a caller who said he was listening to BBC, I think it was BBC Shropshire, and he yeah. said their take on the Lee Anderson story was so bizarre and biased that he had to switch it off because, it you know, true. they're making out that something that actually isn't true. They followed the Daily Mirror line, uh, which is that, you know, he's an evil Tory and he thinks poor people have only got themselves to blame, none of which he actually said. No, I, I remember driving into work, Mike. Do you remember when, when Brexit was caught up in a, in a, log, in a traffic jam? I do remember uh, it very well. The I, and I remember driving in, and the news was pumping out at the time, very one-sided partisan reporting of, for example, the CBI saying that if we leave the European Union, uh, the clouds are going to collapse and right. pet dogs are going to die. die. Because we can't yeah. get all of that sort of baloney. But it was never balanced, never balanced by no. somebody saying, however... The Brexit party say that's a load of rubbish. Yeah. And, and, and that was that was saturating the BBC. It was, absolutely right. Well, listen, Danny, good to see you. Uh, we'll get you on again soon. Um, these bozos should not be getting a pay rise. I think it should be blocked. You know, if the prison minister can actually stop Belfield getting married, maybe, just maybe, uh, we can stop this pay rise going uh, to these oiks at the BBC.